I don't care if Monday's black, Tuesday, Wednesday, heart attack, Thursday, never looking back, it's Friday, let's talk fish. What's going on, guys? This is Jason, and this is Redfish Bluefish. And that song means we made it to yet another Friday, and it's time for a live stream. <clears throat> I'm showing you guys uh, what I showed you last time. I got some new fishies in the beautiful farm tank here. I always like showing off these guys. Nice way to start a stream. Got a few people in here, but I think uh, there's another uh, channel kind of wrapping things up. Hey, welcome, Sand Creek Aquatics. Thanks for stopping by, Nathan. Yeah, these are my cute little green tiger barbs I got. About a week ago remember i had eight of them um i don't know if uh, all you guys remember that i got eight of them there's four here i have seven left remember i, I brought them here and i was really exasperated about um how the heck the fish store gave me these fish um how the fish store gave me these fish in water that measured a tds of 991 Remember, I was freaking out about that. Um, so I acclimated these guys really slowly, a whole 24-hour period to get them down to some normal water. And I lost one of them that next day. So he almost made it. Anyway, I have seven in here now. I noticed, I don't see him now, we've named one of them Popeye because he only has one eye. And he tends to hide in the back. There he is over there by himself in the corner. Yeah, they're doing really good. I love green tiger barbs, man. They're some of my favorites. Looks like we got seven people in here now and three thumbs ups. That's good to hear, Sand Creek Aquatics. I mean, it's not good to hear about the fever, but, you know, just drink plenty of orange juice. Take your, you know, keep your feet up. Take it easy. Hey, Chattanooga Ed. Good to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, these guys are doing way better. They're eating a lot better. This water is a little bit cloudy because I'm, you know, they're new fish and I'm treating them just in case. Yeah, they're doing really well. They're eating. They like to chase each other in and out of these flower pots. And the one that only has one eye, the one that we're calling Popeye, you watch him. He gets to playing with his brothers and sisters, and he can only see out of one eye. So once in a while, he runs into the flower pots, you know, bunk. Kind of writes himself and goes about his business. There he is over there in the back. Well, he's really shy. Anyway, remember this aquarium. This thing, this overgrown jungle aquarium that I was getting all those plants out of. You know, that we were taking into the lab. Remember that? I told you guys I was going to rip it to shreds and I did. Got all those fish out of there, those guppies, got it all out. And uh, hey, Bob, welcome. Sean, uh, got all those uh, guppies taken out, put them in some buckets and what have you. Did a lot of uh, moving fish from here to there. Got all the substrate taken out and replaced it with good old black sand. And you see these, I don't know, 75 or 80 something guppies in here have really had a poop party. So that's awesome. Don't have any filtration set up on this just yet. Actually, these fish are going to get uh, shipped out. So, And I'll just have to clean all this up again. But yeah, that's good. So got that ripped out. Anyway, I ramble. I ramble. Sorry. Overgrown jungle tank down there. We got an interesting show set up for you guys. Want to get back on subject and flip the camera around and say hello. Hello. Got an interesting show lined up for you guys. Um, we're working in the lab, uh, working with a plant that you guys have not seen me work with before. It is a plant with so much variety, it's not even funny. Um, this plant is Rotala rotundifolia. So let me set this down, get this halfway pointed at me. Hopefully audio is good. I think it is. These uh, these Bluetooth headphone things, while uh, annoying, they don't look great. Um, they sound pretty good. 
Hmm. Looks like my stream failed on me here, so. Looks like I'm online, so. Yeah, we're good. We're back. Okay, um, before I jump in, uh, I've already done some prep work. I already made the media up. If you'll remember from some uh, previous live streams, these, these live streams, these science live streams where, where I'm tissue culturing plants, they can be very, very long because the, uh, the you know, tissue culturing, media preparation, cooking, letting it cool down, that takes hours, you know, and you guys don't want to sit here for hours looking at jars get cool, right? So I did that yesterday. I will share the recipe with you guys for how to tissue culture Rotala rotundifolia. As I started to say, this is a plant with so much variety, it's not even funny. Rotala H. raw, Rotala green, Rotala pink, uh, Rotala colorata, um, just so many, uh, Malibu. Um, there's, there's just so many varieties of Rotala rotundifolia, and this recipe will work with all of them. So before I get started there, I'm going to give you guys a little refresher. Remember, we were talking about auxins versus cytokinins and how we balance them in different ratios depending on what we want to do. I'm going to flip the camera around uh, to a, uh, sorry. I'm going to flip the camera around to a um, little thing behind me that will give you guys a refresher. Remember I made this for, for you guys? Let's see if I can zoom in here. get closer so remember depending on where we're working um, we use cytokinins and auxins in different ratios here are auxins over here and our cytokinins so you see depending on what you want to do you use them in different degrees so over here like rooting on I don't know like rooting on shoots you would use a lot of auxins and very little cytokinin, and the opposite true for other things. So one thing to point out before we get started with plant tissue culture, let me get my marker uncapped, with plant tissue culture, where we tend to almost always work, like 90, 95% of the time is here and here in these areas. It's just the fact where we almost never work are here, here, and here. So hopefully you'll see that reflected when I share with you guys what this recipe looks like. We want to be in here right now. We're going to try to proliferate shoots. We're going to develop a lot of shoots, which will excise and, and turn into plants. We'll move up here and we'll start rooting, right? So just wanted to point that out, kind of a refresher. It's been a while since uh, we did that, that presentation a while back. So anyway, I will share with you guys, if I can find it, my notebook around here. <clears throat> so this is going to be another liquid tissue culture. This is, we're not, we're not actually... Um, multiplying right now, we're initiating. We want to initiate these plants into a tissue culture, right? So, um, hey, welcome. I'm missing all kinds of people because I'm looking at the phone instead of the computer. Let me look over here and see what we got going on. Chattanooga Ed, um, Kaler's Aquatics, we've got Sandy. Hey, welcome, Sandy. Sean OOTD, welcome, Sean. We've got Cody's son, Punchy Paints, welcome, Punchy. Um, Chattanooga Ed, I think I'm kind of caught up. Just a lot of uh, little chit chat going on. Some Blu-rays going on. Anyway, um, this is going to be a liquid tissue culture. So um, Rotala rotundifolia is not terribly difficult to tissue culture. Where it is difficult is sterilization. You have to be careful with Rotala rotundifolia. It's just, in my, in my experience, it's a dirty plant, right? It, it's tough to get sterile. So that's where the challenge lies. Now, um, it's quite easy to tissue culture it if you can get it sterile. Um, and what's good is I have a recipe here that will do it all. It will um, initiate the plant into culture. You can use the same recipe 
uh, for multiplication, shoot multiplication. And you can also use the same recipe for root induction as well. So uh, it's basically one liter of water, okay? Your MNS salts, your Morishage and Skoog salts, right? The essential, essential vitamins, basal vitamins, they're called. Um, 30 grams of sugar. You need 30 grams of sugar. That's your carbon source. You need 100 milligrams of myo-inositol, okay? This stuff. This is something we didn't use for any other plants. We didn't use it in any persicarias. We didn't use it in any uh, Ludwigias. Um, Myo-inositol. Okay, so before you buy some of this, uh, make sure it's pure, right? Don't buy it unless it's pure because a lot of times they mix stuff in with this, and I'll tell you why. Unfortunately, this is used to make illegal drugs by some, some people, sadly. Um, obviously, this, is, this has health benefits. Um, humans use this legitimately. Sadly, some people use it for bad stuff, too. So there are these little caplets. Um, you can split them apart. You need to use 100 milligrams of this, myo-inositol, okay? Uh, it greatly assists with cellular division, and Rotala rotundifolia needs that help. You need this so um, and then you need um, if you want to uh, if you don't want to do a, a liquid culture an appropriate amount of agar we discussed that a uh, different grades of agar you need to add different amounts and it comes with instructions so just follow what your agar says um, so our hormones let's let's move on to the part everybody usually likes remember what I was showing you we we want shoot proliferation we would you know to develop shoots we don't we don't want roots yet so we're gonna go with more cytokinin then we're going to go with auxin. Remember, cytokinins, shoots, auxins, roots. I mean, there's more to it than that, but that's that's basically it. So we're going to use more cytokinin, benzylaminopurine. Okay, it's 6 BAP. Another name for it is benzyladenine. Exactly the same thing. Don't worry about it. There's two different names for exactly the same thing. One, it, often in the States, it's called BAP or 6 BAP. That's benzyl aminopurine. Uh, in, the, in Europe and uh, in Asia, often it's benzyl adenine, it's called. It's exactly the same thing. So we're going to go with one and a half milligram per liter of BAP. And then our auxin is one milligram of IAA. That's indole 3 acetic acid. So you see, 1.5 milligram of cytokinin, one milligram of auxin. More one than the other for shoot proliferation. Um, adjust the pH to 5.6 before you autoclave it. That's it. That's the recipe. So I'll do a little camera capture of, uh, of the recipe there. If you guys ever want to do like a screen grab or something like that of it. Here, that sucks. Here, let me do it like that. There we go. One liter of water, 4.43 grams of m &S salts, 30 grams of sucrose, just a touch over 100 milligrams of myo-inositol. Add agar to desired stiffness. Um, your phytohormones are 1.5 milligram of BAP plus 1 milligram of IAA. That's per liter, right? That's for the whole thing. Adjust pH to 5.6 pre-autoclave. Autoclave it at 15 PSI for 30 minutes. And then when you're... You know, your plants are rocking and rolling in it. Rotala, whatever Rotala you're working with, use a 16 on, 8 hour off photo period for 30 days. That easy. Pretty easy, I think. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. Let me jump over to chat, make sure I haven't missed anything. I don't think so. Hope you guys are doing good this evening. Hope the audio is good. I've been plagued with audio problems in the past. Looks like we have 10 people in and eight thumbs ups. Chattanooga Ed says, I got pseudoephedrine today. People make drugs from that too. Yes, they do. That is a precursor. And that's why they've had to get a little strict on it. Punchy Paint says, speaking of drugs, I need to take my daily aspirin. Well, you know, some days we have days that would give an aspirin a headache. Uh, I've had a few uh, like that uh, before. So anyway, let's get started. Um, we're going to select our puttings, but first, let's do some work. Let's 
regular old water. Make sure I just bear with me, guys. Sorry. Bathroom is really messy. I'll leave the light off while I put some water in here. All right. Cool. Just a little bit. Okay, I was thinking um, we're going to do Rotala Rotundifolia Blood Red, this plant that I'm pointing at right there. I got one, two, three, four, five or so uh, going there, a whole bunch of it going over there. And even more down there. Um, but I'd also like to do this Rotala too. Look at this beautiful one. Is this really, really pink, this Malibu. See here? It's a really gorgeous plant, man. I was thinking about trying that as well. Hey, Bob, uh, I'm only going to do, I'm probably going to do like four test tubes, you know? Maybe two of two of one, like two of this. And just, you know, two of the other one uh, in a test tube to initiate the culture. That's what I was thinking. So let's go on ahead and take this guy. Put him there. Get another one. It's really healthy. There we go. A couple of cuttings here. Let me set this down for a second, guys. Sorry. me okay that should be good sorry about that guys okay got our two pieces in here that's our blood red I was thinking about maybe trying that other variety as well that would be fun I want to get those smaller, smaller samples. Set this down while I do that. It's just far too difficult to do this with one hand. Missed it. Okay. Got a small sample of this. And one more. Sweet. All right. Two and two. That's what we're going to do. We keep it conservative. The much longer ones are the blood red. The shorter ones are the uh, Malibu. All right. So what we'll do... We need to cut, trim these things down. Okay. You guys know the drill. You gotta adjust the camera like a billion times. <laughs> I 
I should have put more water on this. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so this is blood red. One one interesting thing to note about blood red is its leaf shape. You know, it's it's got that very telltale shape. You know, it kind of droops down at the end, right at the end. It's a very characteristic of Rotala blood red. That's why so many people like it. So start trimming these leaves off. You got to get the leaves off first. Leaves are a major source of fungal contamination and tissue culture. Leaves no good. Get those off. Put the leaves off with these really sharp, quite precise little shears. I mean, shears. Snippers? Why not? Call them snippers. Let me get some more water. Hold on. To rinse these with. <clears throat> Obviously, since these are aquatic plants, it's a real danger. He's drying out too much and dying. All right. See if I can make short work of this. I hope so. Obviously, these, as you can see, these really, really thin leaf plants are a bit of a nightmare. The leaves have a tendency to stick together, kind of adhere together, you know. Got to get them off. See, like these two? And these are two leaves that are stuck together. You've got to get the blade in between them. Separate them. Make sure that's the last pair. A lot of fun. Like that. There we go. So obviously there's a little bit of leaf material left on the end and you want to minimize that as much as possible without destroying that that end, that meristem, that, that endmost meristem. To have some leaf left on the end is inevitable. All right, so I'm going ahead and excise this. Just like that. Set that aside. We've got this little tip floating in water here. Yeah. And the other one.
this one is tough. Okay, get a little bit of too much leaf here. All right, sweet. Two pieces of blood red should do it. Got multiple nodes on each one. Try to give ourselves the best chance as possible. All right, sweet. Sweet. So we're going ahead and start sterilizing these guys. We can chat a little bit after that because this takes a little while to dissolve in the water. Hey, Rose Aquatics. Now that I can see the phone, I can uh, see that you're in here. Welcome. All right. So this is sodium dichloroisocyanurate. We've talked about this a lot of times. Uh, this releases uh, free chlorine into the water. About two, uh, actually about 300 milligrams uh, into the water. And it has a major benefit over bleach in that it does not alter the pH. It does not raise the pH up to highly alkaline levels like, um, like bleach does. I mean, bleach is super bad for plants. But uh, this is almost pH neutral. So it's very, very helpful for us in, in the uh, tissue culture lab. So we're going to tissue, all uh, right, we're going to sterilize these guys for a bit once this is uh, finished, um, once this is finished dissolving. Let me flip this around. Let's see what we got going on. All right, guys. See how much I've missed in chat. So how you guys been doing? You had a decent uh, week, apart from you know all the stuff that's going on. Hey, Meek AM, Meek AM's in here. Always a pleasure to see you in here. Hello, welcome back. It's not a very busy evening. Uh, I'm kind of uh, surprised to see that. Um, Fish tube seems kind of quiet tonight, oddly. I wonder if something's going on. Well, I know something's going on, but you know what I mean, like some other YouTube event or something. Usually a lot more, but hey, it's totally fine. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I've been going stir crazy, man. I just needed something to do. I thought, eh, it's time to time to get into um, time to get into some some science stuff. Yeah, Bob, that's right. Uh, last week, talked about wood in the cube, boiling it, tannic acid. That's right. Yes, sir. Um, we, I kind of wanted to spend more time on that, but I just kind of skipped over it. I guess the main takeaway is uh, I've, I've been reading, uh, reading, uh, listening to a lot on, on FishTube about people getting um, seed pods off the internet and like leaves, various leaves and and various things like that um, off the internet. And, and that's great, that's totally cool that to, to try to create a, a tannic environment for your aquarium uh, for species that come from those regions is, is absolutely great. Um, but there are a large number of people, a percentage of people I should say that, in my opinion, they're just doing it wrong. They're, they're getting this, this high quality, uh, you know, tannin releasing hardscape, usually wood or seed pods or something like that. And they just throw it into a pot, put a bunch of water on it, and just boil it, boil it, boil it. And nobody should be surprised when that stuff starts turning kind of brown, you know, because you're, you're, those are not the types of tannins you want. Um, you're destroying the good tannins. And that's the main thing I wanted to talk about um, last time. 
didn't want to get uh, too preachy on the whole tannin thing. Um, yeah, just, just getting high quality tannin uh, releasing woods and leaves and stuff like that. Put it in your aquarium. Make sure it's clean and all that. It's quality stuff. Put it in your aquarium and just be patient. Just be patient. They'll release high quality tannins the right way uh, as opposed to, um, you know, boiling the heck out of it. Uh, so Bob Kaler is saying, uh, I've never boiled things, so should not boil it at all. Uh, the, the, uh, the hardscape, um, not, uh, not if it's, um, you know, it's already safe. Uh, if it's being sold, uh, you know, seed pods, catapa leaves, uh, things that are being sold to you, ready to go in your aquarium, you know, they're tannin releasing stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't boil them at all. I mean, certainly if you wanted to uh, dunk them in some like boiling water, for a minute or two to make sure that anything that might be on them is is you know taken care of is kind of boiled off yeah no problem with that but there are a lot of people I've, i'm coming across all kinds of blog posts where people are like um yeah you know add so and so to the pot and add so and so water and boil on high for like 15 minutes it's like, <laughs> wow nothing organic yeah, no organic molecules are gonna fare very well and, and you know a 15 minute hard boil so let's see what we got going on here oh look at that we're already dissolved so we can get started with surface sterilizing our first two rotalas or actually not our first two rotalas our first two explants for our first rotala species there we go that's more accurate so we don't have to be sterile just yet. We haven't sterilized these things yet. Before I drop it in there, though, let me do a little cleanup on this piece of explant that I have here. This is some too many leaves for my liking. Man. Yeah, I see. There we go. Sorry, you guys can't see it. All right. A little bit better. Okay. Our first piece of explant. And our second piece. Get it here. Jeez. Here we go. Second little piece of explant. So there's one other thing I'm going to add. I don't know if I mentioned it to you guys before. A surfacant. Polyoxia la 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 A tween 20 is its uh, popular name. We, we usually add just like one, maybe two drops of tween 20. Like just a little bit like that. And then we uh, top it up with, with water, right? Actually, sorry, I lied. Put the lid on. Like I said, Rotala is a really dirty plant. Harbors, in my opinion, in my experience, it harbors a lot of uh, creepy crawlies, fungus and stuff. And it's also a very delicate plant, which is just a kind of a bad combination. You can't get too rough with it. It'll die. See all those suds? That's from the uh, between 20. And I'm going to add some more water as much as I can without running it over. If I run it over a little, that's okay. Put this on. It's going to overflow a little bit. That's fine. Sweet. Then off camera, I'm grabbing some paper towels. Hoarding the paper towels that I have. <laughs> Get this cleaned up. Then we can start agitation. Back this off a little bit. The idea is. You want these guys floating around in there like they are in there, you know? Getting sterilized, as it were. It's 
So by keeping them moving around like that, at least part of the time, we're making sure that uh, we're making sure that um, they're going to be sterilized, that they're all, you know, beneath the surface of the, uh, the sterilizing fluid. Yeah, so these surficants that I started to mention, tween 20, uh, we add a few drops because it, it assists in making sure that air bubbles aren't stuck to the surface of the explant that we're trying to clean. So you guys know, like, if you've ever held, I don't know, anything, uh, a rock, a stick, uh, certainly something smooth and man-made, I don't know, something made out of smooth glass or plastic, and you've thrown it into an aquarium, right? And it, boop, you know, it goes in the aquarium, sinks down to the bottom. If you come back in a few minutes um, and look at it, right, it'll have little bubbles all over it. Well, what surficants do is they prevent that from happening, or they, they at least try to help prevent that from happening. Because these little pieces of explant, when you put them in the sterilizing solution, if there are little tiny bubbles covering the surface of the explant, Wherever that bubble is stuck to the surface of the plant, it's not getting sterilized, right? So that equals definite, definite problems. Let's finish here for just a couple minutes now. I'm going to watch the clock. Uh, we're going to hit these for a while. I don't want to go too, too, you know, too long and kill them. This Rotala is sensitive. We're going to go for about 15 more minutes. I'm just going to let those sit there. Head back over to chat. I think I saw a couple of uh, questions. So let me uh, see if I can address those. Let's straighten this up here. Ah, this is terrible. <laughs> okay. Hey, Big J's Fish Keeper. Welcome, bud. Fishy Fun 57. Got some more people coming in, looks like. Uh, looks like we have a question from Fishy Fun 57. What is the difference between tissue culture and one, two grow cups? Uh, nothing, exactly the same. Uh, so the tropical one, two grow, um, like the liquid cultures, um, they're liquid tissue cultures. They're exactly the same. The one, the one uh, difference between Tropica and other companies uh, that make tissue cultures for sale uh, in the aquatics industry is that Tropica are almost exclusively liquid tissue cultures. Right. So they don't use agar. They don't add agar to their media to stiffen it up. So it's like a gelatin jelly type stuff. No, it's liquid. And that's actually pretty smart uh, on, on the part of Tropica. Uh, liquid tissue cultures are easier. They're faster. They're cheaper. But I will tell you where they where they fall over. They don't ship well at all. They just don't. So. There's really no difference. Uh, just the Tropica stuff's liquid. Let's see. Got a question from Sean OOTD. Jason, did you get a chance to watch the video I sent you the other day? Uh, no, I did not. A video. I did not see that you sent me a video. Was it was it over email? Um, that was to Sean, by the way. Sean OOTD. I did not, but if you sent it to me uh, in my email, can you shoot it to me again? It must have been a, a, a link or something, a YouTube link. But um, I would love to see anything you got to share, bud. Uh, I am always up for learning. Quit following me, Sean OTD, says Rose Aquatics. Uh, I think that you guys are showing up to a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same fish tube streams. People are going to start talking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Hey, Cody's son. Uh, we got uh, Griffin Fish Room in here. Welcome, Griffin. Appreciate you stopping by, buddy. So we're just uh, we're just surface sterilizing some Rotala blood red, uh, Rotala rotundifolia, a blood red variety. I also have some um, uh, Rotala Malibu, Rotala rotundifolia, a different variety called Malibu. It's really really pretty. Um, while this is sterilizing, eight seventeen. Let me write this down. All right, I had to take note. Um, yeah, I want to show you guys. Uh, I didn't have very many people in here at all uh, when I first started. I, Lucas started late and he's ran pretty late, I guess. It's kind of this, it's been happening more and more. Bit of a bummer, but what can you do? 
Um, the light's already off, but let me show you this uh, this Malibu, how this stuff looks. This Rotala, this Rotala Malibu is just, I love it so much, man. Shine the light. It's this really, really pink stuff right here. It's this plant right here. It's just really, really, really pink. And uh, it's got a much, much thicker stem than most other Rotalas. And uh, it, it's definitely different. It, it's definitely, no question about it, it's some kind of a weird mutation. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from. It really doesn't have much of a name. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty killer. It's really, really awesome. I like it because it's got way more character than any other Rotala does. It's got a thicker stem. It doesn't like to be planted like real thick. You know, people plant Rotalas in like a big bunch, you know, which is beautiful. It's a nice effect, but that Rotala doesn't like it. If you plant it real close to a whole bunch of other Rotalas, it doesn't do well. So you have to kind of uh, plant it spaced out a little bit, which makes it even more beautiful because it's a standout plant, in my opinion. So I'm going to see if we can tissue culture some of that next after the blood red. Slip this stupid thing back up. Oh, we got some good news from uh, from Nathan over at Sand Creek Aquatics. All of us were pretty worried for you there, buddy, but he got great news today. He was running a real, you know, with the stuff going on in the world right now. Uh, he has to go out for medical treatments from time to time. Uh, I hate hearing about that, but came down with a really gnarly fever, and uh, he was worried about that. And, uh, Looks like he's going to be good, good to go. So big shout out to Sand Creek Aquatics on the awesome news. Uh, we've got another question. looks like from Fishy Fun 57 What steps do you need to do when planting tissue cultures? I have stayed away from buying them. Uh, it's really easy. Buy them, open them, um, make sure that you rinse, you know, be kind of gentle with them. Don't be too rough with them. But, you know, under a, a, a warm or, or uh, I should say room, room temperature uh, tap water, just a really lazy little stream of tap water. Uh, pop the entire, you know, plant with the gel attached to the roots. Pop it out and knock the, the excess gel off and then lightly rinse the gel off of the roots. And just make sure that there's no gel on, on the plant or the roots before you put, put it into your aquarium, plant it in your aquarium. Because if you do put that gel stuff in your aquarium, it's going to explode. You're going to have a micro microbial kind of explosion because it's sugar, it's hormones, it's all kind of stuff in there. And uh, bacteria, I've seen bacterial blooms occur with just a little bit of that. Uh, well, not a little bit, a decent amount of that. Somebody accidentally got some in an aquarium and it made this, it's like half inch thick layer of snot. It looked just like clear snot on top of the aquarium for days. Like clean it out, get rid of that snot. Next day, be back. Next day, be back. Next day, be back. The only way I, I saw that person get rid of that problem was just with just getting rid of it and Tetra Safe Start, of all things. Adding some Tetra Safe Start, which is a, a beneficial bacteria, kind of elixir you can add to your tanks, that stopped it immediately. So long, long uh, answer made short. Just make sure you bust it out of the, uh, you know, the little um, container. Gently rinse the gel off of the roots. Make sure there's no gel left. And with your tweezers, plant them. And you're good to go. Pretty easy. So hopefully that answered your question. Absolutely, Sand Creek. Uh, we mean it. I mean it, bud. Um, you were in our thoughts, and we're super happy you're going to be cool, man. Um, Kaler's Aquatics with a comment. Ooh, I bet that's what discolored my father fish tank. I added some crypts and noticed a little bit on the root, but remembered it said it wouldn't hurt fish. Yeah, it's true. It, it won't hurt fish, but it will cause bacterial blooms for sure, Bob. That's, that stuff's a bummer. Um, often if, if you get a tissue culture and for whatever reason, maybe the plant has a really fine root structure, like really, really like, um, hair like short roots everywhere. And some of your Carpeting plants are bad about this. Just take your time and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it. And if you're and if you're sure you just can't get it out, don't put it in your aquarium. Just throw it away. Just don't use plants that that are going to almost guarantee that you're getting that stuff in your aquarium because it's it's not good. Chattanooga Ed with a uh, 
question. Can you splice two different plants and make a culture from that? No, I can't. I wish I could. Um, what you can do uh, often, I've seen a few people, uh, commercial people do this, is when they're ready to move the plant from, what is it, stage two to stage three, which is rooting, you're ready to root the plant out. If you have two or three plants that require the same sort of phytohormone profile to induce rooting, what you can do is you can, like, make a large container with the same, you know, media in it, right, and put two or three different kinds of plants into it for stage three and root them all in one container. You can do that, but um, there's some pretty cool stuff uh, that happens out of the lab with hybridization. Um, sadly, I don't have the, the knowledge or the, or the materials to be a splice and, you know, gene splice. I mean, that would be really cool though. I wish, I wish I, I wish I rolled like that, man. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You can you can graft all kinds of trees together. You can do stuff like that. Um, absolutely can. Yep. And there there are some companies out there that are selling tissue cultures where like half of it is like what was one I, I actually sold some of them a while back. Um, it was a large tissue culture, and half of it was AR Mini Purple, and then then the other half was like um, Baby Tears, something like that. Yeah. So it was like a carpeting plant and like a kind of a, a pretty Ford foreground plant together in one cup. And that was pretty cool. I really like those. I should make some of those uh, someday. Someday. Let's see, how are we doing on time? We got about three more minutes and then uh, we, I believe, can bust out our Rotala blood red and hopefully we'll be sterilized, hopefully. Hopefully, see how we look over here. You know what's crazy is I only see one piece of explant in here. Definitely put two in here. Hmm. Well, that's odd. something magical disappearing piece of plant hmm Make sure we're agitating it properly. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm looking all over. I only see one explant in here. I put two, which is strange. If it drops some, somehow around here, that's very weird. Well, I guess we're just making one of this right now, anyways. Very strange. No, they're not stuck together, bud. See, it? I don't know if you can see it floating right, right there on top. See it floating there, it's a little stick it's right there. Very weird. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> whatever. I'm not going for uh, numbers or quantity right now. I'm, I'm actually going for quality. I'm, I'm trying to initiate this, and all you need is one. As you saw, as you guys saw before, um, 
show you here. Sorry. This was one piece of explant. This was Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. This was one tiny piece of explant. And it was a little tiny twig, about, about the same um, that you see back there, except this is Rotala, I'm sorry, Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. And you see we have like, I don't know, 20 shoots. Um, and the idea is each one of these little tiny shoots, you excise them and take the tips off and do it all again, which will give you unspeakable, unspeakable number of, uh, of shoots, obviously. So as I say, you only need one. I, don't know, I have a bad feeling about this one. I think this is going to be, I don't know, I hope I'm wrong. I think this is going to be a contaminated. I do have bad luck from time to time with Rotala. It's difficult. It can be a difficult plant to sterilize and get clean. All right. See if I can get a better angle for you guys. There we go. Maybe that's halfway decent. So you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. It's going to be very, very short and sweet. I'm going to take my forceps here. And I'm going to um, sterilize them in this alcohol lamp. I'm going to try to fish this out of there. See where the heck that other piece of explant went to. Oh, look at that. Right there on the edge. We just found it. Well, that's a bummer. When the when the uh, when I filled it up, the uh, the water ran over and it knocked it over the, the lip. And when I screwed the uh, Screwed the lid on it, squished it. So that's definitely history. Well, we solved the mystery of the disappeared, you know, explant thing. Very bizarre. Anyway, whatever. So we're going to start this. Sorry. Start this. Start this fire. Get some gloves on. Because now we are sterile. We do need to be careful from this point on. Normally, um, I would uh, wash these plants under, like, running water with, you know, cheesecloth. You've seen me do it before. But these rotalas, they're so delicate that I don't want to do that and just beat the hell out of them. Because then, I mean, they're dead, right? Before you even started, you you failed. So I'd rather take my chances and skip that with these rotalas. Often, that's, that's the best policy. Sometimes it's not. Okay. Put my hand with some alcohol. Precious, precious alcohol. This stuff is very, very difficult to find right now, sadly. All right. Get my good forceps, my favorite ones. that we sterilize the entire thing. Okay. I'm going to dry them, or rather, cool them, not dry them. Now over here, Going to open this up this here. Now this is liquid culture. This has already been mixed up. This has 1.5 milligram of BAP, one milligram of IAA per liter. Push our explant out of here. Another good thing about using this 
NADCC, this stuff, is that it's no rinse. You don't need to rinse it. So we're just going to put this guy right in here. It's that difficult. I'm going to reach over here and get the lid. Put the lid on. And that's it. Hopefully, that'll pan out for us. All right, so while I have um, this going on, hmm, let me get our other Rotala out of here. Put it over here. Actually, put it here. Oh boy. Leaves off of there, hopefully. All right, it's about as good as it's going to get on this one. In there. All right, see if we can do another one. Yeah, this Rotala Malibu, man, this stuff sucks. Just for culturing it. Leaves stick together. Ah, bummer, man. All right. Mm -hmm. See if we can get another one down here, guys. That's All right, cool. See what I'm doing? I'm literally trimming each and every leaf off of it, I'm leaving only the petioles and the very, very end. It's really hard to do with these small plants. But usually this is sort of, you know, stereo microscope level work, but I don't have one right now. It's a bummer. Might have to change that in the future. Anyway, put that here. There we go. All right. I'm going ahead. What? Get this crushed, this crushed piece of plant out of there. The Indiana Jones, you know, crushed piece of plant. It did not survive the old Indiana Jones rolling boulder thing. Squish. All right. Cool. 18 people in here and 17 thumbs ups. I cannot complain about that guy.
Appreciate that, guys. Hey, what's going on, World Aquarium Singapore? Glad to see you in here, buddy. I'm just making some tissue cultures. Uh, I have a good feeling about this one, actually. Both of these pieces, I'm looking at them. Very, very viable. You see them in there? Very healthy. I could have done a better trimming job, that's for certain. I'll show you. See that one? Definitely could have done a better job trimming that, but I will take it because Rotala's, as I said, <laughs> they can be difficult to uh, tissue culture. They tend to be a dirty, quote unquote, dirty plant. Um, you think that you surface sterilize them sufficiently. You think that you're good to go. You know, you do your thing and three, four or five days later, you start seeing contamination. So I've had that experience with this plant. I certainly don't, don't want to have it again. Well, hopefully this works out for us. This will be two very, very good strains to have established in the lab. I'd be very happy about that. All right, so let's time this. Okay, sweet. Just wanna make sure that we're agitating these sufficiently for them to get sterilized. Yeah, there, there were a lot of uh, live streams today. There's some decent ones, actually. All right, so while that's going, let's flip this back around and uh, go back to chat. All right. I'm especially looking forward to getting uh, the Malibu established. Um, that is... So, really hard one to come across it's a hard plant to find so that would be fun get this out leave them on for now let's see what i have missed hey kurt hey welcome buddy guys i gotta give a, give a shirt out to uh kurt chet chuck a good good friend of mine uh i have known this guy for since high school uh, so yeah, we talked the other day and he said he'd try to make it over. Welcome, Kurt. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. We're just working in the uh, lab here, nerding out. I mean, what else are we going to do? It's a, uh, we're all locked up, man. <laughs> nice. So Kurt is, uh, I believe, up in uh, West Virginia, West Virginia area right now. Um, hopefully, uh, weather's treating you decent. It's been pretty good here, man. It's been pretty good. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Perfect way to practice social distancing is right. <laughs> Just do some live streams, man. You can, you can do those from anywhere. All you need is a phone and an internet connection. And I have both of those. So we're going to, uh, at 8.56, I'm 8.42 p.m. local right now at 8.56. We're going to take those um, uh, Malibu, uh, Rotola Malibu out of there. And, oh, look at that. That's perfect. It's staying suspended. That's what you want. And I don't see any air bubbles on it whatsoever. Where's the other piece? The other piece is floating. It's kind of what you shoot for. You like to, uh, to see them suspended like that. Because if they're floating at the top, right, like this one piece wants to all the time, well, how's he getting sterilized, right, if he's not underwater? So that is cool. Now, we might be beating the hell out of these plants in this 
and this strength sterilizing, you know, agent, but we'll find out. Uh, Fishy Fun 57 with a question. Uh, how many individual plants can be in a tissue culture? Um, so it really depends on the plant. Uh, if, you're de if you're talking about um, like some carpeting plants like UG, uh, try to pronounce it, Utricularia graminifolia. Uh, if you're talking about one of those carpeting plants, thousands and thousands and thousands. Uh, and your typical, let's, let's go with something typical like Rotala rotundifolia. Um, or Ludwigia repens, both of those that I showed you up there. Uh, and you're in your, like a, like a Ludwigia repens mini super red culture, you'd probably for like 10, 11 bucks, you'd be getting practically speaking about 40 plants, maybe 50. Uh, and I'm not counting the itty bitty ones in the culture around the edges that are always stunted and don't do well. And they always just kind of disintegrate later. I'm not even talking about those, but maybe 40 or 50 plants, depending on the species of plant. Rotala probably 100, 150. Um, I mean, it just depends if it's a really fine plant, something like that. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. Supposed to storm tomorrow, Sand Creek says. Uh-oh. That we've been, that was, that was actually uh, cloudy and drizzly all day today. In fact, we're supposed to have cloudiness and drizzle like for the next week, I think, up here, so... Not missing much outside. But then again, it's the Pacific Northwest, man. If you don't like drizzle and rain, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Kurt says nice weather here. Nice. Well, I'm glad someone has decent weather. It has not been awesome. Okay, Fishy Fun 57 uh, is clarifying. I was thinking stems, are they uh, a good buy then? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stem plants, especially uh, any of your stem plants in a tissue culture, as long as you're buying, you know, good tissue cultures. I've seen some tissue cultures for sale, all right, in like Petco, PetSmart, the big box stores. And I've stopped and I've looked at them. Most of them don't look great, to be honest with you. Um, and I think they're charging four or five bucks for a little, a little bitty thing. I wouldn't even pay $3 for it. It's not going to live. Um, no, if you're getting like an ADA tissue culture, a Tropica or a UNS or any of those, um, you know, one of those normal size tissue culture cups full of stems, say Rotalas or Ludwigias or, um, any of the, uh, anything, uh, uh mermaid weed. There you go. There's another one. Um, like you'd definitely be getting um, out of out of any of those a minimum of like twenty stems for ten bucks. I mean that's fifty cents a stem, right? So that's really cheap. Yes, they're very small because they're tissue cultured, but they're also sterile. They're not going to have algae, shrimp, uh, shrimp. Excuse me, uh, algae, snails, um, any anything uh, on them like that. So. It's a pretty good deal, in my opinion. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, just wondering about Tropica. Uh, at your LFS are 15 bucks. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Tropica tissue cultures are more expensive than the others. Uh, they're pretty good, though. They're pretty good. Uh, they also they don't always ship well. Uh, that's a bummer about liquid tissue cultures. Some people for a while were having a problem getting uh, the tissue cultures and they'd be contaminated because they got dumped upside down and things like that were happening. So I understand that Tropica has made uh, great strides in taking care of that. So still for 15 bucks, pretty awesome deal. You're getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 stems. It's pretty nice. Um, you definitely can't get that many stems, you know, purchased directly out of an aquarium for that amount of money. Hey, welcome Chevy Fish. It's kind of a, a weird day scheduling wise. I noticed that um, some people are getting getting started late today. So we got a few more minutes left before we uh, where's our before we move ahead, there we go. Yeah, I think we're going to be good with these guys. I get a feeling. I don't see any. 
any bubbles or anything clinging to them, which is great, which is great. It's always what, what you fear. Nice, okay. So just a few more minutes, uh, let's see. Looks like about eight more minutes, and we can get them out of there and plug them into our uh, our media. And uh, hopefully, now with Rotala's, I'll tell you if you're tissue culture, tissue culturing Rotala rotundifolia, and you have it right, and you're doing it in a liquid tissue culture, which I do recommend. Um, usually within about three days, three to four days, you'll know if you have it right. It's pretty quick to respond. Um, Ludwigia repens, uh, whether it's mini super rat or no matter what variety, is much slower to respond, usually eight to ten days before you even know if it's going to work. So, uh, Rotala, usually three or four days. We, we should start seeing meristematic activity at the nodes. We'll start seeing some, some green growth, we hope. Fishy Fun 57, uh, snaking maybe two stems, so you've given great information. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, yeah, so um, if you can find some, you know, uh, people selling private stems, clippings or whatever, absolutely, get them all day long. Uh, if you want to start like an aquascape from the beginning with tissue cultures, well, there is an advantage to tissue cultures in that um, when you start them all at once, all of your plants are starting from the same size, you know, so you, you keep everything to scale. Um, but absolutely, I, I, I myself purchase really rare stem cuttings uh, sometimes. Um, there are some dealers on the internet that are really good. Han Aquatics has been great. Uh, Pearling Plants has been great for the most part. I had one problem with them, and they made it right. So I would recommend both Han Aquatics and PearlingPlants.com. So if you guys ever want to go out there and get like maybe one or two or three stems or a rare plant, they'll take a clipping and sell them to you, four or five bucks for the rare ones. It's a great opportunity to uh, plug them into your tank and experiment a bit. Hey, Aquaballs, welcome, buddy. Glad to have you by. So we have, it looks like, six more minutes, and then we'll get these X plants out of there and get them plugged into a couple more test tubes. Now, the other test tubes that I made, you noticed I had eight here. I'll flip around. And I made uh, eight of these guys. The other ones, I was thinking, perhaps tomorrow is the one we just made. It's the Bertala Blood Red. Um, so I have, a, you know, I have some, some additional ones. I made some extras because I'd like to uh, experiment with that Persicaria Sao Paulo that we tried in uh, TDZ and NAA. Didn't work out so well. I'm um, going to see if it responds better to benzylaminopurine and endoacetic acid for the phytohormone profile. So that's why I made additional ones. This is what life has been reduced to, guys. You're logged on to the internet, watching a man you don't know shake a jar back and forth. This is what this, this thing that's going on right now in the world this is what it's reduced us to. Can't believe it. I'm joking. Or am I? Let's go back to chat and see what's going on here, guys. Well, I'd show you more uh, fish and stuff, but the lights are switched off. It's kind of late here. Um, got a little bit later start than normal. Apologize for that. Um, oh, uh, Chevy Fish with a comment. Uh, how do you spell the first plant source you mentioned other than pearling plants? Han Aquatics. H-A-N. Uh, his name is... Sorry. His name is Han. I think I want to say he's a Vietnamese gentleman, Vietnamese American. Uh, Han, H-A-N. So HanAquatics.com. Um, he used to have a lot more selection, and I, I kind of I hope he's doing okay. I hope he's not getting ready to close down, but he's been a fantastic source uh, for some pretty rare plants. He's got some rare plants, but I notice he's he doesn't have a lot. He's got a lot of stuff marked to uh, out of stock right now. 
which is weird. Hurling Plants is another really good source. <laughs> well, thank you, Chevy Fish. You'd watch us even if there were no problems in the world. That means a lot to me, bud. No, um, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd be here in the lab messing with plant stuff and fish and nerding out no matter what was going on out there. I mean, I'm, I'm right at home doing this stuff, man. So let's see what time we got. Got three more minutes, it looks like. Two, maybe two. Where is it? Oh, here we go. See these guys floating around here. Get this stuff plugged in and hopefully it'll work. Yeah, Bob, that's right. You did watch before lockdown, buddy. You were, you were watching a, an unknown man shake jars of liquid on the internet before you had to. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I appreciate it, guys, you coming by. Like I say, every Friday, you guys are my fish club. I don't have one where I live. There is none. So kind of uh, keeps me sane. Um, yeah, I'm really looking. Oh, you know what? I need to get this out of here. One more thing we'll do before we leave tonight. This Persicaria Sao Paulo, because of the, the hormones in here, and, and I made it such a thin liquid culture, you see all the shoots? I mean, there's so many shoots in here. They're like, I don't know, many, many plants growing in here now instead of just one. So it started making tons of shoots and babies everywhere. I need to get this out of here and cut it out, cut the... Uh, Cut the usable shoots off of it and uh, get it plugged into my farm tank. Don't want to waste it. We tissue cultured that. So let's see. Uh, it looks like we are good. We're ready to go. So let's uh, let me switch the camera back over. All right. Okay, lighter, lighter. Who's got the lighter? There we go. Got my handy dandy, handy dandy alcohol lamp lit. All right. One last shake for posterity. All right, sweet. I hit my hands with this alcohol. All right. First things first, I'm going to use these really long, long tongs here. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. There's these shorter ones. There's a piece down in there that's not floating. It's at the bottom. And I don't want to use these long tongs. So I'll get this piece off the top first. Just sterilizing my tweezers, my forceps off camera, guys. It's bear with me. All right. Pull these off. Grab another test tube over here. Take the lid off. Make sure these are dry. Yep. Just like that. Oh, actually, so this one sunk, so let's 
I can up a lot of that. So I can get to it without putting these forceps all the way in. Sterilizing over here off camera. Drop it. Come back. There we go. Sweet. Just like that. Okay. Sweet. Well, we wanted to make... I wanted to make one more Rotala blood rib than I ended up making. Um, that little accident, but that's okay. I'm really excited, actually, about getting um, Rotala Malibu established in this lab. Because no one, and I know this for a fact, no one has been able to get it to work. It is a difficult, a very difficult Rotala to tissue culture. I've never gotten it to work. No one's gotten it to work. So if I can get this to pan out, I'd love to... Uh, share some of these tissue cultures with, with some of my subs. I think that would be really cool. It'd be a cool thing to uh, be able to send out. You know, a few of them. Kind of a thank you. Anyway. All right. Always remember to turn your flame off. Good with that. So we're going to set these here. And those other tubes I will fill with uh, plants probably tomorrow. So here we have our Rotella Rotunda Folia Blood Red. And then here we have our Rotella Malibu. One at the bottom. And then, of course, our originals that we started, oh, actually, I think it's right at almost a month ago now. Um, our Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. Get this plugged in here. Yeah, so they're doing really, really well. I'm very happy with this strain. Clearly, this, this strain is already established. This is exactly what you look for, uniformity. So I'm very pleased with that. Couldn't be happier. All right. So nice. Yeah, the, the, Ludwig, the, the Ludwigia Repens did amazingly. Uh, it did really well. Um, that's only... Um, that's only a subculture, right? It's one culture. That's that's not normal. Usually, it takes subculturing several times to stabilize it, but you know, worked out pretty well. So let me hop back in the chat real quick and see if I missed anything. Hopefully, this wasn't too boring. Just like me working in the lab and gabbing and all this stuff. Ah. <sighs> Chevy Fish, uh, why does one float in one sink? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's a good question. One floats and one sinks, though, very clearly. Uh, hopefully the one that's uh, sinking, that's, that's not a sign of something bad. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, Kalos Aquatics uh, with the uh, well-deserved comment. Han has some incredible plants. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I think Han is... I think he's in Boston. I think he's in Boston or somewhere in Massachusetts, somewhere. He's on the East Coast for sure. But, uh, yeah, he, he has some, some killer plants. Curling Plants actually has a really good selection of some, some cool stuff. They had, what did I see recently? They had some AR variegated, which is very cool. Alternum Terra Reynikii variegated. That's not common to come across that stuff. So you might want to give PerlingPlants.com a, a look as well. They have, they have a pretty decent selection. Now, I will tell you something. When you order from Perling Plants, chances are excellent that when they send you stems, they will not be submerged. They will be immersed, right? They will, they will have been grown above water when you get them. So when you get them, plant them in your aquarium, they're going to start converting. So if you get Rotala rotundifolia and it has oval leaves, like round leaves, and you're like, what? What, what, what the heck is this? It's because it was grown out of water. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll show you a good example of that with some Rotala. I grew out of water. Oh, actually, I won't. The light's off. Well, let me grab a flashlight. See this plant here? With the oval leaves? The very, very round oval leaves? That's Rotala rotundifolia. Right? That is Rotala growing out of this aquarium. And you see its, eaves, its leaves are totally round, hence the name rotundifolia, round leaf. However, in an aquarium... Look at that. Those are not round leaves. Those are long, skinny leaves that are slightly rounded on the end. So that's what I mean by um, if you order, and you should order some plants from Perling Plants, chances are good you're going to get them with round leaves because they are not grown underwater. Uh, they're grown in a greenhouse. So you need to plug them in, let them convert, and that's super easy to do, guys. It's, it's easy, especially with stem plants. Just uh, plug them into your aquarium. Um, oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> uh, just plug them into your aquarium and, and let them convert. You know, they'll start putting little shoots out everywhere that have very different looking leaves on them. And those are their, those are their um, submerged form. Sorry, I was uh, mind blanking there for a moment. I'm kind of tired. Um, yeah, Chevy Fish, absolutely, bud. Uh, if you, if you want to learn those plants, um, then I really recommend either Han Aquatics or Perling Plants. Uh, so just go out and just got like one leaf, uh, one leaf, excuse me, one stem, or like two stems of each kind, like $4 or say $3. You can't even buy half a pack of cigarettes for $4. Not that you should buy cigarettes. Please don't because they're gross. But you cannot even... Buy anything for three or four dollars anymore. Yet, from Han Aquatics or Perling Plants, you can get one, two, maybe even three stems of a pretty damn rare plant sent to you in the mail. Plug it into your aquarium, you know, and just make a mental note: this is so and so, that so and so, that so and so, and watch it. Watch it for a week, and you'll see it, see it start converting and exhibiting some really cool behavior. That's stuff that uh, really gets me going. Uh, I saw a mention of Little Peter. Punchy Paints with a comment. How is my ex-husband's namesake doing? Little Peter. I think he's doing okay. You guys, uh, I think I can show you Little Pete. I think the light's on still upstairs. I hope so. If not, we'll wake him up. Just because he's named Peter. And all Peters are scumbags. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, the light's still on. I won't. I'll keep the camera focused on me. Uh, because I have family up here. Doing family things. Oops. Let's see little Pete. Where's little Pete? Hey, here you are, buddy. What's up, bud? There he is. He's got his full Platinum Galaxy Tiger Guppy colors on display. He's hoping for some food. Yeah, he deserves some food. Sorry for the jiggling camera. I'm trying to open a, a Ziploc. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Got it. Okay, guys, come on. Some food? A little bit? Just a little. He's such a small guppy. 
you have to kind of crush it up for him. And he's doing great. Doing great. You know, he's just guppying it up. Guppy's going to gup. You know, it's all they do. And his uh, new babies actually are doing really well. In fact, that's her babies. Her, or where is she? This big one. And Senor Pedro here. Little Pete. Pedrito, you could call him. So I'll show you the uh, their babies. Actually, I was I think I showed you last time. I was only able to save two of them. But I'm really curious to see if they have that kind of you know dwarfism that I was looking for in this uh, in this breed. Um, I won't know for quite a while. We still got the fungus thing going on in this tank. You know, wood usually fungus is up for a couple, two or three weeks in the beginning. Totally normal. Well, let's see. See where are these guys? Some chili. I mean, uh, chili raspberry is in here. Oh, there we go. There's two babies in there. There's one. Oh, and there's the other one down there. That's the bully. It's the much larger one. She likes to bully the other one. <laughs> I think that's a that's a she actually. With this strain of guppies, I'm not even joking you. With these uh, with these platinum tigers, platinum galaxy tiger guppies, they're really really um, light fleshed. You know their flesh is very light, and you can uh, you can actually tell when they're little tiny fry like this if they're a female or, or male. This is a female. This one up here, the one that gets bullied all over the place, is, is a male. He's much smaller. Yeah, the shrimp are still in there. Yeah. There's one right there. You see Mr. Shrimpy? Mrs. Shrimp. This is a green jade shrimp. Looking for some delicious fish poop. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. What a life, eh? Live in a glass box full of water. Picking poop out of sand. Like a poop miner. Yeah, stay in green, man. Stay in green. One in here definitely did not. One turned straight up yellow. Where is it? Let's see if I can find it. The imposter. There's a really pissed off a mono shrimp right there. She definitely does not like this new home I put her in. She's not happy. But um, where is, man, there's one. That, oh, there you go. There it is right there. Look at that one. Straight up. Same shrimp. Green? Not green. Was green. Not anymore. Look at that. Look how look how much it changed. Let me take this out of uh sorry. Stupid tripod so I can get closer. There we go. That's much better. Oh, you put Amanos in the rainbow tank, Bob? <laughs> Are they pissed off too? Amanos get, get pissy sometimes if you move them, you know? They got, for a shrimp, they got a lot of attitude. You know, they're super aggressive, right, around food. But for shrimp, you know, they, they definitely have attitude. Exactly. Better to be pissed off than pissed on. But anyway, this is a quote-unquote green jade shrimp. Uh, no, it ain't. It was. But it definitely turned straight up yellow. And see, even on this lighter colored rot, definitely green. You can see both of them there. <clears throat> both Neocaridina Davidii, but... Hey, Natural Aquariums. Welcome, man. That's okay. Better late than never. I'm actually running way over tonight. We are working in the tissue culture lab. It was a kind of a short... Uh, I don't know. Not a short live stream, but I didn't do as much work in the lab as I kind of hoped. We just made three little tissue cultures. Uh, hopefully, we can get them... Uh, get these these two strains of plants established. We've already gotten our Ludwigia repens mini super red established really nicely. You know what, you guys? You guys need to eat a little bit. Cut this. Uh, these 
baby guppies <clears throat> can't really compete that well for food, so I cut the filter before I um, before I feed them often. Crush some of this up. Good old tetra, good old tetra men, just a little bit. Just that, that much. That's it. Why the hell is this thing on? It's freaking hot in here. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, so we, we made a Rotala Blood Red and some Rotala Malibu tissue cultures, hopefully. If we can get it established, the strains established, that would be killer. You guys eating? Yeah. Yeah, a few of these chili rasboras, man, in here are just freaking gorgeous. A few of them are really, really bright. Let's see if I can find some. I like this guy. Looks like everybody's getting a decent bite tonight. That's good. So I've been feeding these baby guppies on baby brines, um, but they're a week old. It's time to grow up, freeloaders. I'm not going to keep feeding you baby brine forever. Yeah, check them out side by side. Same shrimp. One of them turned yellow. And one of them held on to the jade green. Just not unheard of. That's fine. The Ludwigia repens mini super red is growing super red in here, as you might guess. Really gorgeous plant. Anyway, that's the update for now. Going ahead and uh, kick this filter back on now that they've had a chance to get a few bites. It's a so-called Tetra Whisper. If you know those filters, they're, uh, Whisper is the last word that I would use to describe them, for they are not quiet. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, so that's uh, actually going pretty well. Been doing some pretty serious water changes on it. Um, you know, uh, this this aquarium, we only set it up like a week, a little bit over a week ago, and I've already got 10 chili rasboras, two guppies, what, four shrimp, one a mono. I mean, that's a lot of animals in here. Um, I did use a Tetra Safe Start to uh, quick cycle it. And uh, so that's always good. Uh, Tetra Safe Start Plus is, I think, what it's called. I, I've used that uh, several times in the past. It's a great product. I've never had any problems with it. And there's no question in my mind that that helps to get your aquarium cycled way faster than doing it, you know, the other way. So anyway, guys, heading back down. You guys did get to see little Pete, little Peter. So I'm going to, um, uh, some cleanup to do around here. Yeah, I'm so happy with this. I can't believe that we've already got this so stable. That's not normal. I mean, I guess I guess you get lucky from time to time, but we didn't have to subculture this now that I think of it. This is Ludwigia Reppens Mini Super Red. This is the other one that did really well. And clearly, you can see A lot of callus, but that's normal. Anyway, yeah. So very pumped up about potentially having a couple of new strains established in the lab. That would be great. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys hanging out, coming by, spending some time with me in the lab. Um, uh, I always forget to say this, but if there's anyone here that kind of likes what uh, what they saw, and you're not subscribed to me, I'd appreciate it if you would remember to hit that subscription button, hit that magic button, 
maybe don't forget that bell. Hit that notification bell. Otherwise, you don't know when I'm doing live streams, putting up cool videos, doing giveaways, stuff like that. So, guys, it's been a great, uh, a great evening, actually. This is, a, this is a pretty decent live stream. I'm happy about it. Um, and hopefully in three or four days, I'll be uh, dropping some, maybe some, uh, some posts in the, in the community tab on my, on my uh, YouTube channel to show you guys some updates. Maybe maybe I'll do another live stream or in three or four days to show you guys some some good progress we're hoping for. Anyway, guys, it's been a day. I hope you guys enjoyed your time here. I certainly enjoyed you guys coming by and hanging out with me. I guess until next time, I'm going to wrap it up here. You've been watching Redfish Bluefish and hope to see you soon. Please take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Wash those hands. You know, do what they're saying, and we'll come through this. I know we will. Hope to see you soon, guys. Take care.